Every era has a pharaoh. And against every pharaoh, there is a Moses, defeating pharaoh and his army, speaking directly to God, splitting the Red Sea in two. The incredible life of Prophet Moses. Over a thousand years after Abraham, the Jews were living as slaves in Egypt. This was ancient Egypt. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was a very rich king who said, I am your greatest lord. He had sole sovereignty over Egypt. He brought many kingdoms to their knees. Pharaoh's beard reached down to the ground. He was short. It is said that he ate a camel for dinner. He is very healthy and never experienced any trouble throughout his life. The people of Egypt used to worship in his name. It was at this time that God sent Moses. His birth coincides with the period of Pharaoh's oppression in Egypt. Some historians record the birth date of Moses as around 3,700 years after the fall of Adam. One night, Pharaoh saw in his dream a fire coming from Jerusalem, and that this fire reached all the way to Egypt and burned their houses, but the Israelites were saved from this disaster. Frightened by his dream, Pharaoh asked the soothsayers and astrologers to interpret his dream. They said, A child will be born among the Israelites, and this child will cause the destruction of Egypt and the kingdom of Pharaoh. Upon this comment, Pharaoh ordered the male children born to the Israelites to be killed. Pharaoh divided the people into groups, and seeing a group as weak, killed their male children, but left the women alive. When the number of people able to do business decreased among the Israelites, the cops went to Pharaoh and said that if he continued this massacre, they would not be able to find anyone to do their job in the future. Thereupon, Pharaoh ordered that boys should be killed one year and that they should not be killed the next year. Aaron was born in the year when boys were not killed. Moses is born during the Jewish enslavement in Egypt, during a terrible period when Pharaoh decrees that all male Hebrew infants are to be drowned at birth. His mother, Yochaved, desperate to prolong his life, floats him in a basket in the Nile. Hearing the crying child as she walks by, Pharaoh's daughter pities the crying infant and adopts him. Exodus 2, 1, 10. God placed the love for Moses in the heart of Pharaoh's wife, Asiya. When Pharaoh saw the baby Moses, he wanted to kill him, but Asiya wanted the child to be given to him. Asiya told Pharaoh not to kill the baby. Maybe he would be useful to them, or they could adopt him. Casas 9. God prevented Moses from suckling any wet nurse. This alarmed Pharaoh and his family. Moses' sister took this opportunity to suggest a family to take care of Moses, and thus Moses was returned to his mother. God's promise came true, but most people did not notice this miracle. One day, little Moses was brought into Pharaoh's room. Pharaoh took Moses into his arms, but Moses pulled Pharaoh's beard hard and slapped him. Pharaoh was enraged by his behavior and claimed Moses was his expected enemy who would come and kill him. So he ordered him to be killed. However, Pharaoh's wife, Asi, quickly argued that Moses was a child and had not yet come to his senses. She suggested an experiment. Precious stones were placed in one plate and fire in the other, and it was observed which Moses would choose. If he chose precious stones, he was wise. If he chose fire, he was a child. Pharaoh agreed to this trial, and the plates were brought. While Moses was bringing his hand to the plate full of precious stones, Gabriel intervened by God's command and pushed Moses' hand. Moses took the ember of fire and put it to his mouth. His tongue was burned, and he became lisping. This continued until he prayed on Mount Tur. Pharaoh forgave him and spared Moses' life. This incident shows that Moses was a special person protected by God. Angel Gabriel comes quickly and protects him when necessary. His future mission is to spread and dominate the message of divine religion on earth. Just like the prophets before him, Moses would invite his people to believe in God.
The Torah was given to Moses as a book. It is one of the four great books sent by God to humanity. Moses is a descendant of Abraham. It is stated in the sources that Moses was tall, with weedish skin and curly hair. He was the miracle-working leader chosen by God to take the Israelites out of Egypt more than 3,300 years ago. One of the greatest prophets for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam religions. Moses will lead the Jews out of slavery in Egypt and will lead them to the Holy Land that God had promised them. One day, Moses, who grew up in the Pharaoh's palace and was in his twenties, went to the city. In those days, the Israelites were at the lowest level of the caste system established by the Pharaoh. At the top layer were the Copts, a cruel baker of the Pharaoh named Fatun and an Israelite named Samiri were fighting. When Samiri asked for help from Moses against his enemy, Moses punched his enemy, causing his death. Moses said, My lord, I have wronged myself, forgive me. And God forgave him. Oh, surely he is forgiving and merciful. Moses said, My lord, by the blessing you have given me, I will never help the criminals. Moses saw that the person who asked for help from him yesterday was fighting again, and when he asked for help again, Moses said to him, I wronged my soul yesterday because of you. Hearing these words, another cop there immediately ran to Pharaoh and complained about Moses, saying that Moses was the murderer of your baker. Pharaoh decided to kill Moses. The news was conveyed to Moses by one of the believers. Moses, the leaders will kill you. Get out of here immediately, he said. Moses left in fear. He said, My lord, save me from the cruel nation. I hope that my lord will show me the right path when I head towards Midianites, he said. After coming to Midianites, Moses met Schwab there and married his daughter. After marrying Schwab's daughter, Moses stayed in Midian and herded sheep for ten years. After staying for ten years, Moses set out with his family, and then Moses across the desert to Sinai, the holy mountain. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him from a burning bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but it was not burning up. This is strange, he said to himself. I'll go over and see why the bush isn't burning up. When the Lord saw Moses coming near, he called him by name from the bush, and Moses answered, here I am. Old Testament Exodus Bible 3, 4. Let's look at the rest of the story from the Quran. God says, O oh Moses, it is truly I. I am Allah, the Lord of all worlds. Now throw down your staff. But when he saw it slithering like a snake, he ran away without looking back. O oh Moses, come back and don't be afraid. You are perfectly secure. Now put your hand through the opening of your collar. It will come out shining white. And cross your arms tightly to calm your fears. These are two proofs from your lord to Pharaoh and his chiefs. Indeed, it was said that they are a nation that has gone astray. Moses said, My lord, I have indeed killed a man from them, so I fear they may kill me. And my brother Aaron is more eloquent than I, so send him with me as a helper to support what I say for I truly fear they may reject me. God responded, We will assist you with your brother and grant you both authority so they cannot harm you. With our signs you too and those who follow you will prevail. al 30, 35 Prophet Moses and Prophet Aaron met and embraced by the Nile River. Prophet Moses said to his brother Haran, Let's go to Pharaoh because God has assigned us both to this. However, God Almighty also stated the tone that should be followed while making this announcement as follows. Speak to him gently, so perhaps he may be mindful of me or fearful of my punishment. Taha 44 When God's command was conveyed to him after Moses and Aaron conveyed it to Pharaoh, the foolish Pharaoh said, did we not raise you among us as a child, and you stayed several years of your life in our care? In the end, you did that bad thing you did. You are an ungrateful person. Eswara 18, 19. 
Moses replied. I did it then, lacking guidance, so I fled from you when I feared you. Then my Lord granted me wisdom and made me one of the messengers. Musa continued, How can that be a favor, of which you remind me, when it was only because you have enslaved the children of Israel? But who is your Lord Pharaoh, O Moses? he said. Our Lord is the one who gives everything its existence and characteristics, and then shows the right path. If you were to think and understand the truth of the matter, you would confess that he is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and everything that is between them. Pharaoh said to those around him, Do you hear? Suara 20, 25. Moses added, He is your Lord and the Lord of your forefathers. Pharaoh said mockingly, Your messenger who has been sent to you must be insane. Moses responded, He is the Lord of the east and west, and everything in between, if only you had any sense. Pharaoh threatened, If you take any other god besides me, I will certainly have you imprisoned. Moses responded, Even if I bring you a clear proof? Pharaoh demanded, Bring it then, if what you say is true. So he threw down his staff, and, behold, it became a real snake. Then he drew his hand out of his collar, and it was shining white for all to see. Pharaoh said to the chiefs around him, He is indeed a skilled magician, who seeks to drive you from your land by his magic. So what do you propose? Swara 30, 34 Pharaoh and his advisors gather a delegation and discuss the issue. Finally, they recommend gathering master magicians from different parts of the city and challenging Moses. In their own minds, they will show that the miracles performed by Moses are nothing more than magic. Pharaoh said, Now appoint a meeting time that will suit both you and us in a place suitable for people to come. Taha 58 Remarkably, Pharaoh leaves the determination of time and place to Moses and gives him the opportunity to have such a competition with the magicians in the presence of the people. Moses warned the magicians, Shame on you. Do not invent lies about God, otherwise he will send such a punishment. Whoever fabricates lies is bound to fail. Taha 61 And that day came. On one side are Pharaoh's great magicians, on the other side is God's prophet Moses. The magician said, Moses, will you throw down or shall we be the first to throw? Moses replied, No. Let it be you to throw first. Then suddenly it appeared to Moses, owing to their magic, as if their ropes and staffs were running. So Moses' heart was filled with fear. God said to him, Have no fear, for it is you who will prevail, and throw down what is in your right hand. It will swallow up all that they have wrought. They have wrought only a magician's stratagem. A magician cannot come to any good, come whence he may. Eventually, the magicians were impelled to fall down prostrate and said, We believe in the Lord of Moses and Aaron. Pharaoh said, What? Did you believe in him even before I permitted you to do so? Surely he must be your chief who taught you magic. Now I will certainly cut off your hands and your feet on opposite sides and will crucify you on the trunks of palm trees, and then you will come to know which of us can inflict sterner and more lasting torment. The magicians answered, By him who has created us, we shall never prefer you to the truth after manifest signs have come to us. So decree whatever you will. Your decree will pertain, at the most, to the present life of the world. Taha 66, 73 Pharaoh increased his cruelty even more. Whoever believes in Moses, he ordered them to be tortured and killed. Pharaoh had deep wells dug. He lit big fires in these wells. He brought the believing people to the well, threw those who were determined to believe in God into the fire. Despite this, believers did not give up their faith and were thrown into the fire. Meanwhile, the cruel people who watched the people being thrown into the fire would sit around the ditch and watch this cruelty with pleasure. 
One day, a woman with her child in her arms was brought to be thrown into the fire. When the woman sees the burning flames, she hesitates. At this moment, the child in her arms speaks up and says, Jump in, Mom. You are right, and they are wrong. And his mother is thrown into the fire. There were some miracles for believers, sometimes even they are not prophets. When Asiya, Pharaoh's wife, witnessed Moses' miracle in front of the sorcerers, her heart had been lit with the light of belief. She did not hide this truth from Pharaoh any longer. She said, Yes, I also believe in the Lord of Moses, because her heart could no longer bear the torture inflicted on believers. She chose death over royal privilege and torment in this world over the luxury in which she was living. Pharaoh ordered his men to tie her up under the scorching sun and put a heavy stone on her chest and let her die there. At the same time, he ordered Asiya to be nailed to the floor. When she was breathing the last moments of her life, she prayed to God as such, O oh my Lord, build for me in nearness to you a mansion in the garden, and save me from Pharaoh and his doings, and save me from those that do wrong. God accepted the prayer of this faithful, chaste, and devoted woman, and put her beside some of the best women of the world like Miriam. Moses continued to call Pharaoh and his people to faith. As Pharaoh denied, God sent various torments to his people, such as the flood, locusts, insects, frogs, and blood. But none of these brought Pharaoh and his people to justice. They said, Whatever ayat you may bring to us, to work there with your sorcery on us, we shall never believe in you. So we sent on them, the tufan, the locusts, the kumal, the frogs, and the blood, as a succession of manifest signs, yet they remained arrogant, and they were of those people who were criminals. And when the punishment struck them, they said, O Musa, invoke your Lord for us because of his promise to you. If you remove the punishment from us, we indeed shall believe in you, and we shall let the children of Israel go with you. But when we remove the punishment from them for a fixed term, which they had to reach, behold, they broke their word. Araf 132-135 In response, Moses said to his people, Seek help from God and be patient. This land belongs to God, and whoever among his servants follows his orders will inherit it. The chiefs of Pharaoh's people said, Will you set Moses and his other people free, so that they may cause mischief in the land and abandon you and your gods? Then Pharaoh ordered more torture and killing believers. Some of the believing followers of Musa said, We were tortured before you came to us and after you came to us. Moses said, It may be that your Lord will destroy your enemies and make you rulers on the earth and see what you do. When believers complained to Moses, God Almighty revealed to Moses to take the Israelites out of Egypt one night and take them to the land of Palestine. Moses and his people left the city and headed towards the Red Sea. Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled. Pharaoh made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Also, he took six hundred choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with captains over every one of them. He pursued the Israelites. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook Israelites camping by the sea beside Pi-Hahiroth before Baal-Zephon. Exodus 14, 5, 9 Pharaoh had caught up with the Israelites two days later, and when Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Exodus 14, 10, 12 The Israelites had an impassable sea in front of them and a huge army behind them. The Israelites started complaining, We were caught, Moses. They will kill us. There is the sea in front of us, and the Pharaoh behind us. If we go into the sea, 
we will drown, they said. The water of the sea had increased enormously, and the wind was lifting the waves of the sea like mountains and dropping them back. Moses, peace be upon him, came from behind and in front of the Israelites. Past. He was looking at the sea, whose waves were crashing against each other and foaming, even though his brothers Aaron and Yusha B. Nun were with him. Pharaoh and his armies. They came and met the Israelites with all their hatred and anger. And a believer asked to Moses, This sea has covered your front, and Pharaoh and his warriors behind you. Where were you commanded to pass? Moses, I have been ordered to cross the sea. Although these and others forced their animals to dive into the sea in order to cross the sea, they retreated when the front legs of the animals began to sink into the water. None of them had the strength to swim in the sea. Then Moses said, No, my Lord is with me. He will surely guide me. Shwara 62 God revealed to the sea and said, When my servant Moses struck you with his staff, Moses and those next to you, O oh, divide into two parts to pass. After that, fall on Pharaoh and his supporters and unite, he said. And to Moses, Strike the sea with your staff, he revealed. Moses said to the sea, Split with the permission of God. When he struck his staff, the sea immediately split. Every part of the sea became like a huge mountain. Twelve roads in the sea for the twelve tribes of the Israelites. It was opened. God also sent a wind and dried the wet road. He made it suitable for walking. Each tribe took a path and started to move forward. The sea was divided into two so that we touched the sea with our reference to Moses. Every part of it is like a lofty mountain. There we saved Moses and all those who were with him. Shwara 63-66 After Moses and those with him had walked, Pharaoh and his armies came to the sea. Pharaoh and his friends approached and saw that the sea had split. When they see, Pharaoh said, Don't you see how the sea is afraid of me and my majesty, and how it opens for me so that I can catch up with my enemies and kill them? Pharaoh's horse was afraid to enter the sea road. At that time, Gabriel came on his horse and stood in front of Pharaoh's horse. After the male horse smelled him, Gabriel rode his horse to the sea road. Pharaoh's horse immediately followed him. When Pharaoh's army saw that Pharaoh had entered the sea route, they also entered the sea route with Pharaoh. There was no one left who did not dive into the sea. When the mounds of water in the sea, raised in the air like huge mountains, began to close in on Pharaoh and his armies. Pharaoh said, I believed that there was no God other than what the Israelites believed in. Now I am one of those who surrender to him. God said, Now? And you had disobeyed him before and were of the corruptors? Eunice 91. So we inflicted punishment upon them, drowning them in the sea for denying our signs and being heedless of them. Araf 136. He and his soldiers in that place, Egypt, were unjustly arrogant and thought that they would not be returned to us. Thereupon we seized them, Pharaoh and his leaders, and their soldiers and threw them into the sea. Look, what was the fate of the oppressors? Casas 39, 40. When the Israelites heard the terrible sound of the waves crashing against each other as they closed in on Pharaoh and his armies, they said, what is this scream? they asked. Moses also said, God destroyed Pharaoh and all those with him by drowning them in water. Israelites, didn't you see that he doesn't need anything that people need? Some of them doubted whether Pharaoh was dead or not. Pharaoh is not dead. He never dies. He did not drown in water. He will catch us and kill us right now they said. When Moses prayed, Almighty God sent the sea. The sea caught him. Even though he was wearing his armor, he lifted it above the water. The Israelites recognized him by the shirt of armor he was wearing. Finally, they came to the conclusion that he was dead. Yes, O oh Moses, this is Pharaoh. 
he really drowned in the sea, they said. When doubt disappeared from the hearts of the Israelites, the sea swallowed Pharaoh as before. Before Pharaoh and his army drowned in the Red Sea, Moses was in Egypt. He promised the Israelites that he would bring a book from God. When God destroyed Pharaoh and Pharaoh's people and made the Israelites safe from their enemies, the Israelites said to Moses because of there was no book for them for the rules, O oh Moses, bring us the book you promised. Moses also asked this from his Lord. God told Moses to come to Mount Sinai and worship and pray to him. While he was leaving for Sinai, he left Aaron as the head of the Israelites instead of himself. He promised them that he would return after staying in Tour for thirty nights, which God increased to forty. Moses, peace be upon him, went up to Mount Sinai. His Lord spoke to him. He gave him orders about the Israelites. And then Moses came and asked, My Lord, reveal yourself to me so I may see you. God answered, You cannot see me, but look at the mountain. If it should remain in place, then you can see me. When his Lord appeared to the mountain, he leveled it to dust, and Moses collapsed unconscious. When he recovered, he cried, Glory be to you! I turn to you in repentance, and I am the first of the believers. Allah said, O oh Moses, I have already elevated you above all others by my messages and speech, so hold firmly to what I have given you and be grateful. RF 144 Moses one day, O oh Lord, which one of your servants is your beloved? saying asked. God, he is the one who remembers me the most, he said. Moses, O oh Lord, which of your servants is the richest? asked. God, he is the one who is most pleased with what I give him, he said. Moses, O oh Lord, which of your servants is the best judge? saying asked. God, he is the one who judges people just as he judges himself, he said. Moses, O oh Lord, which of your servants is the most fearful of you? asked. God, he is the one who knows me best, he said. Moses, divine, how can I thank you? All my deeds do not equal even the smallest blessing from the blessings you have bestowed upon me. God, O oh Moses, now you have thanked me. After Moses went to Mount Sinai, Samiri, who didn't believe God, and made a calf by golden. Then he said that Moses' God had forgotten us, and asked the people to worship the calf. A Samiri artist made a calf so skillfully that when the wind entered it, it bellowed as if it were alive. He achieved this by opening holes in the calf and making pipe-like sounds depending on the strength of the wind. Then Samiri said, Look, the statue is talking to you. By inculcating the public that he was God, the scenario alienated some Israelites from the true religion. Aaron persistently warned them, but they did not listen. During these forty days, the Israelites forgot God and worshipped the statue of Samiri. God said to Moses, who was on Mount Sinai at that time, after you, we tested your people, the Israelites who stayed with Aaron, and Samiri led them astray. When Moses returned to his people angry and sad, he said, What evil things have you done behind my back? Did you rush and not wait for your Lord's command? Moses came to Aaron and asked, O oh Aaron, what prevented you from following my path when you saw that they had gone astray? Did you disobey my order? My brother... This tribe saw me as really weak and almost killed me. Aaron said, Do not make the enemies laugh at me and do not keep me with this cruel nation. Moses said, O oh Lord, forgive me and my brother. Accept us into your mercy, because you are the most merciful of the merciful, he said. Then Moses returned to his people angry and sad. O oh my people, did not your Lord make you a good promise? Then, did the time seem too long for you, 
or did you want the wrath of your Lord to descend upon you, so that you broke your promise to me? When they regretted it and saw that they had gone astray from the truth, they said, If our Lord does not have mercy on us and forgive us, we will surely be among the losers. Thereupon Moses and Aaron prayed, crying out of compassion. The verse was revealed, and their repentance was accepted. As for those who commit evil deeds, and then repent and believe. Surely, after repentance and faith, your Lord is surely forgiving and merciful. And God said, He forgave you so that you would come to your senses and be thankful after your actions. After this, Moses returned to Samiri. What was your problem, Amir? he said. That is, I saw what they did not see, because, following the footsteps of that messenger, I took a handful of soil and threw it into the molten jewelry. This is how my soul made me like it. Moses, go away, and don't touch me for the rest of your life. Also, there is a day of punishment for you that you will not be able to escape. I swear to God that I worship. He will burn the statue. According to the narration, after Moses' curse in the verse, Samiri actually caught a serious and contagious disease and had to stay away from people throughout his life. According to the rumor, Moses left his people forty nights or forty days after receiving a promise from the Israelites that they would obey the Torah, and no one saw him again. God sent down the Torah to Moses in Hebrew, which contained many commandments, prohibitions, harams, halals, sunnahs, and provisions. When Moses returned from Mount Sinai to the Israelites and brought the Torah, they refused to accept it and to act in accordance with the obligations imposed on them and the provisions of the Sharia. Thereupon, Mount Tur was lifted above their heads. A fire was sent to them from the side of their faces, and a salty sea was brought after them. E to them, Hold firmly on what we have given you, hold on tightly to it, and listen to our words. Either you accept this and do what I command you, or this mountain will be left behind, or you will drown in this sea, or you will be burned in this fire, it was said. When the Israelites saw that there was no escape for them, they had to accept this and prostrated themselves on half their faces. In prostration, they looked at the mountain above them from the corner of their eyes. It became a sunna and custom for the Jews to prostrate on half their faces and look upwards from the corner of their eyes. O oh, Moses, we heard and obeyed. We accepted, we accepted. They said, If the mountain had not been above us, we would not have obeyed you. Rabbinical Judaism calculated a lifespan of Moses corresponding to 1391-1271 BCE. According Old Testament, after the Ten Plagues, Moses led the exodus of the Israelites out of Egypt and across the Red Sea, after which they based themselves at Mount Sinai, where Moses received the Ten Commandments. After forty years of wandering in the desert, Moses died on Mount Nebo at the age of 120, within sight of the Promised Land. The death of Moses is a significant event in the Bible, particularly in the book of Deuteronomy. Despite his advanced age, his eyes were not weak, nor was his strength gone, indicating his vitality even in his old age. Location of Moses' death and burial Moses died in the land of Moab, as the Lord had foretold, and he was buried in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Peor. The exact location of his burial is not known, as the Bible states that the Lord buried Moses, and no one knew the precise location of his grave. An interesting aspect of Moses' death is that the Bible mentions that the Lord himself buried Moses. According Islam, Moses died in the desert of Taich after Aaron. He was 120 years old when he died. Bukhari narrates the following regarding his death. When the angel of death came, Moses looked at his face carefully. Azrael, who came to take his life, was afraid and his vision darkened. Then he said, 
O Lord, you sent me to one of your servants who does not want to die. Moses did not like death. God wanted to make him like death. One day, while Moses was going alone, he stopped by the angels who were digging graves, and when he recognized them, he stood next to them. Until that day, Moses had never seen anything more beautiful than this tomb in terms of beauty and elegance. Thereupon he said to the angels, O oh, angels of God, for whom are you digging this grave? asked. They said, We are digging for a servant who has gained superiority in the sight of God. They said, Moses, this servant probably has a special place in the sight of God. I have never seen a place like this to enter and sleep in. The angels asked him, Do you want this grave to be your grave? They said, Moses, Yes, I would love to, he replied. Thereupon the angels said to him, Then go down to the grave, lean back, turn to your Lord and breathe very comfortably. They said, Upon these words of the angels, Moses went down to the grave, turned to his Lord, and then breathed a sigh of relief. With this breath God took his soul, then the angels threw soil on his grave and closed it. Another story says that God sent angel to Moses again. Tell him to live as long as he wants, as long as it is numbered. Prophet Moses said, What will happen next? He said, You will die. Then let death come now. He prayed. Then he asked God to bring him a stone's throw closer to Jerusalem's mosque, Beiti Makdis, to die there and to be buried there. This prophecy was fulfilled when the mummy of Memta, the pharaoh of Exodus, was discovered in 1898, and it is now on display in the Royal Mummies Room of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Dr. Maurice Bukai converted to Islam because of this reason. When analyzing the body, they found traces of salt, indicating that the body must have drowned. The Quran talks about the drowning and the preservation of the pharaoh. So today we will save you in body, that you may be to those who succeed you a sign. And indeed, many among the people of our signs are heedless. Eunice 92, 